Thank you for joining us on the Oregon Tribal Student Grant Workshop. Um, our presenter today is Jake Logan. I'll let you take it from here, Jake. Alrighty, hi there. My name is Jacob um, Logan LaVoy. And a little bit about um, myself and my background. I am a member of the Seneca Cayuga uh, Nation um, and my family descends from the Deer Clan of the Haudenosaunee people um, or people of the Longhouse and we're commonly known as the Iroquois. I was a, I'm a born and raised Oregonian uh, where I attended Western Oregon University for my undergraduate degree, majoring in social science and art history. And I am currently attending Western Oregon as well, getting my master's. I've worked in a community college, a small public university, and also a large research university before my time here at OSAC. A little bit about what we'll be talking about today. I will be giving a legislative update, um, and you are a very lucky um, group as you will be getting the most recent legislative update as we had a hearing yesterday on the bill for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. We'll be going over about the application process, what it looks like from start to ending, as well as the eligibility and awarding process for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. And I do have um, quite a bit of time to decide for questions. So starting with the Oregon Tribal Student Grant and the legislative update, um, the program was um, established to provide grants to eligible tribal students um, coming from the nine federally nice recognized tribes of Oregon to help offset the cost of attendance. So um, at eligible colleges and universities within the state. So this current year, the 22-23 academic year is currently the pilot grant program. And we are working currently on getting the, the funding for this grant to become permanent through the legislative process. So the current 23-24 um, renewal is currently going through the legislative process. However, yesterday, um, there was a hearing on the bill which received great um, feedback and no criticisms of the bill at all. We actually received a pretty big compliment from one of uh, our representatives saying that he didn't see any uh, rough draft feeling of the bill, that the bill was really solid and really ready to go. And a lot of the questions that they normally have from bills, he didn't have. So we really spent a lot of time over the past few years, really getting this bill to be written perfectly and great so we can get through the legislative process. With such great legislative um, hearings so far, we are tentatively opening or we will be opening the application for the 23-24 academic year here probably at the um, mid to late April. Um, so we will be sending out other guidance and information closer to that time as well. And then um, as well on our website for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant, you can see all the sort of eligibility required to, um, criteria for this Oregon Tribal Student Grant um, based off of uh, bill and administrative rules, as well as there is a list of participating schools. Not every single um, school in the state of Oregon is necessarily considered um, participating or eligible for the Oregon Tribal Grant. So on the slide deck, which you will be getting, you will get um, links to the Oregon Tribal Student Grant overall eligibility requirements, as well as a list of participating schools for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. And this is kind of what the, the whole application process looks like. But one thing I really want to stress is the only thing that the student really needs to be concerned about or really fully active in is the steps with the little asterisks beside them. So the first one is the student creates an OSAC account. That's how they apply for other grants as well as Oregon Tribal Student Grant, as well as scholarships. They submit and complete the Oregon Tribal Student Grant application within their OSAC account. Once they submit that application, they are given a form called the Tribal Enrollment Verification Form. They send that tribal form to the, their tribes for their enrollment officer or enrollment offices or whoever that um, tribe has um, designated for those uh, kinds of forms. This, the tribe will send that to us once they've completed it. So the student will complete the top half of the form. The tribes complete the bottom half of the form and that's sent to us. We then review that tribal enrollment verification form um, review their application, decide if it's a valid application, which 
to be decided a valid application, they have to have a current FAFSA for the current academic year that they are wanting to attend. They also need to be an enrolled member of one of the nine federally recognized tribes of the state of Oregon and enrolled in their school, um, at least half time to receive that grant. So once we mark that application as valid, the school will receive notice and can review the student in the Oregon Tribal Student Grant Partner Portal. So that's where all the universities and colleges upload enrollment information, as well as if they're meeting satisfactory academic progress, other sorts of grants and scholarships, as well as the award amount for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. That is really handled on the school side. So if students really want to know exact dollar amounts of what they might be getting in the Oregon Tribal Student Grant, really their school is going to be the best bet um, for that kind of information because it will be the schools who actually award the Oregon Tribal Student Grant and then we send those funds to the school. So the school reviews the student in the partner portal. We receive that um, data entered on the portal page. We then send the funds to, um, for OSAC will then send the funds to the school. And then again, on the uh, back on the student side, the school will disperse the grant to the students, to their student account at the university or college. If there was a refund from the school, the school will send that. And then that's kind of where the student side ends. So they create the application, they submit the application, complete the tribal enrollment form, send that to their tribe, and then we will process that form, validate their application, the school awards them, we send the funds to the school, the school then disperses that funds to the school or to the student. And if they have a refund, so that's when a student's aid exceeds their term charges, that is still all done at the school side. So if a student has questions about where the refund might be, why the refund was that amount, that was really a great question for the schools because they'll have the full picture of the student's financial aid award, as well as their charges. So how the grant is um, awarded is, or the eligible amounts for the um, Oregon Tribal Student Grant is it's up to the school's average cost of attendance for 15 credit hours per term, minus any sort of state and federal grants. The grant itself cannot exceed the actual cost of attendance. So kind of an example, we have a student named Linda who is attending Umpqua Community College and her cost of attendance for fall term is $5,000. So Umqua also knows that Linda is receiving $2,000 in Pell, $1,200 in the Oregon Opportunity Grant. This means the student would be eligible after you make all those reductions from the cost of attendance from, from Pell, from the Oregon Opportunity Grant, that she can receive $1,800 in the Oregon Tribal Grant. And it's very much the same at the university level. Um, the only big difference really for university is that some university students may be an undergraduate, so obten ab attending to obtain a, a bachelor's degree, or they might be a graduate or a professional student, so they could be working on their master's or PhD. So it's still based off of the average cost of attendance for 15 credit minus for 15 credit hours minus state and federal grants and scholarships. The only scholarships that would not be counted um, against the Oregon Tribal Student Grant, regardless if the student is at a public four-year university, university, a private university, or a community college, whether they are an undergraduate, master's or professional level student. So any sort of scholarship from the student's actual tribe won't be counted against the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. Only other maybe native tribes, so scholarships not from the tribes themselves, school scholarships, any sort of scholarships that they might receive from OSAC, as well as grants. So at the Federal Pell Grant, the Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, um, the Oregon Opportunity Grant, Oregon Promise, um, those will are counted first and then 
schools will fill in whatever is left in their school's cost of attendance with the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. And it, again, it's, it can get a little bit more complicated once you are up at the master's or professional level. Um, so we really advise students to either reach out to their schools for assistance and um, understanding that or really having them reach out to me directly um, so we can kind of go over what it might look like at the um, graduate and professional level. And then so for a four year um, example, Alfredo is attending University of Oregon. His cost of attendance is $10,000 for fall 23. Um, he has 2,696 in Pell. He has 1,200 in the Oregon Opportunity Grant. And then U of O gave him $2,000 in a U of O scholarship. So once we make, once U of O makes all of those deductions based off of his cost of attendance and his other grant and scholarship aid, that means Alfredo could get $4,104 in the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. Sometimes um, if you have students who are going from a public four-year um, where they may just feel a little bit overwhelmed and they're going to go to attend to a community college to get a little bit better sea legs within higher education, they are still eligible for the grant. However, because community college has typically will have lower cost of attendance, those students who are attending community colleges will typically have lower Oregon Tribal Student Grant amounts because it's based off attendance, our cost of attendance, um, as well as other um, scholarship and grant aid that the student might have. Um, there is really no standard like Pell or Oregon Opportunity Grant. It can vary student by student. So we will see schools um, award various amounts in different in the Oregon Tribal Student um, Scholarship. So if students are really asking for a, a general amount, it, the best answer really is it depends on your school um, and how expensive that is. Um, so if they're really, really lost on that, you can always send them to us and we can get them um, either linked up with an accurate contact at the school level or answer their questions directly. And then for graduates and undergraduates at a private nonprofit college or university, the grant is um, up to the highest cost of public schools, average cost of undergraduate cost of attendance for 15 credit hours per term minus any sort of state and federal grants as well as scholarships. When it comes to private schools, it can get a little bit more complicated. So again, if students are really lost at what that might look like at the private school, have them contact us and we can get that information to them because there's just so many different moving variables and parts to this. There's really no, unfortunately, great way to say it's a flat rate or it's an average cost. Um, so it really depends on student choice. Um, student choice will really affect how much they may receive in the Oregon Tribal Student Grant compared to Pell or Oregon Opportunity Grant, where it's typically flat rates matched to EFC. The amount can really greatly vary. Um, so again, having them reach out to the school, having them reach out to us is really the best option when it comes to like how much they really should be um, receiving in the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. We also have quite a bit of um, tribal resources for both Oregon tribal students and for non-Oregon non um, tribal students. So um, this is a list that I have started building or we have started building here at OSAC. You will receive a rough copy of this in a PDF if you so wish. Um, there are tons of different scholarships out there for Native students, and we are starting to compile um, a list for both um, students who are from one of the Oregon tribes or students who are Oregon residents but may not qualify for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant because they are not one of the nine Oregon tribes. So like for me, myself, if I were to be an undergraduate student, even though I'm an Oregon resident and even though I am a tribal member, but since my tribe is Oklahoma-based and not an Oregon federally recognized tribe, I wouldn't qualify for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant. However, a lot of these scholarships 
Um, Cobell is a very well-known one, as, so, as well as Nada Forward Scholars Fund is another really great um, resource. I could still apply and possibly um, qualify for any of these scholarships. And we also do have um, a few OSAC scholarships that are for Native students, but not necessarily tied to um, being an Oregon Native. Um, so there are resources both at the OSAC level as well as national level. And what's great about um, kind of these tribal resources like Hobel and the American Indian Education Foundation is that these scholarships will travel with the students. So if they decide that they're not going to attend an Oregon school or some other thing, a lot of those scholarships will travel with the student and aren't necessarily a tie to institution, which is really helpful for a lot of um, Native students who may be really struggling with school choice, and this is still very, very new to them. Um, so having some other scholarships that may be a little bit more flexible, um, just depending on the student school choice is really helpful to get them set up for success. And then that pretty much wraps up my uh, spiel. We, um, and just kind of have some basic numbers for you. So in fall of 2022, we um, served about 300 students from 29 different schools. And within fall alone, we have dispersed a little over $2.5 million um, to help our Oregon Native students. Um, we do still have some winter and spring numbers coming in. So um, that's not the final tally, by, um, final tally by any means, but we are still processing winter and we'll be waiting for spring as well. And at this time, I open it up for any sort of questions. Great. Is it, if anyone has questions, feel free. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, or you can type it into the chat. Thank you, Jake. And then real quickly, here's my contact information. I'll have that up for the remainder, just in case you want to reach out and have any sort of other questions or any sort of follow-up. Yes, they can. So the question is, can a student start at any time during the year currently? We do not have a lot or hard deadlines for when a student can apply for the student grant. However, keep in mind as this becomes a little bit more permanent and it becomes much more prominent and popular throughout the state, we may start have to enforcing deadlines um, for future upcoming years. And those will always be um, broadcasted and displayed on our websites. Next question is, will students be notified about a fall award before the May 1st decision deadline? Um, so that would really depend on the school. Um, so some schools uh, are waiting for to hear if it becomes um, funded for the next academic year before adding that. Um, however, really, if the student is attending one of the eligible institutions and is um, enrolled at least half time and um, is a verified member of one of the nine Oregon tribes, the student will receive some sort of funding level from Oregon Tribal Student Grant. Um, we won't have any sort of follow award or um, numbers really before the May 1st deadline, um, unfortunately. Because um, um, again, we are still really, really waiting for um, the legislative process as this is the pilot uh, year for the grant. You will find it in the OSAC. So the question is, do you find the um, Oregon Tribal Student Grant on the OSAC dashboard or is there a separate website? There is not a separate website. It's all through the OSAC website. And um, real quickly, that kind of reminds me, um, students who um, are still, who are currently receiving the Tribal um, Grant, if you are in works with them and they're currently receiving it, they will also need to reapply for the grant. Um, for the upcoming year. Jake, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the application. Sometimes our students are wondering, you know, how many questions there are, yeah. what kinds oh, of information they need so to much. collect before that. Yeah, I'm so sorry to have missed that point at the beginning. So the application is pretty simple. We're really asking um, what tribe you're um, a member of, what school you're attending, name, um, and what terms you are planning on starting or attending, so fall, winter, and spring. 
Um, those are really the four big questions on the application that need to be completed. So the applying for the grant on the student side really shouldn't take that much um, time because it's through the OSAC portal, through their OSAC profile. So a lot of that kind of background information is already loaded. They just really need to let us know what school they're attending, what tribe they're affiliated with, and what terms they are attending. And so if they Jay, don't know what school they're yeah. going to attend, then what? Um, they can start the application. And then once they have figured out the um, school, they can submit it. Or if they are thinking like, I'm really thinking U of O, that's the school I really want to go to, they can apply with U of O and then fall term rolls around like, actually, I'm going to be going to Western Oregon University. They can email us and we can get that updated. So Jake, they can't put multiple schools. They have to just choose one just to choose get one. different award letters from different schools to figure. Well, if they want their award letter for from their college, that has to be done at the college level. We don't send out award letters. We don't send out what um, they may or may not be eligible for because there's so many moving components to the Oregon Tribal Student Grant because it is a last dollar grant program. So that means we have to take into consideration Pell Grant, Oregon Opportunity Grant at the community college level, Oregon Promise. Um, if the student's receiving supplemental grants like the Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, as well as sort of other um, institutional scholarships or other private scholarships, not from the student's tribe. Um, right, that but like- has to be but like on the FAFSA, you know how students can use, you know, identify yeah. multiple schools so they could get an award letter from multiple schools that they're interested in going to and then make the decision based on their award letters from each institution right. so, on our yeah. application. We only allow one. Is that right? On the Oregon Tribal Student Grant application, there's only a room for one school because okay. we're only going to send that application to one school at a time because you can only receive it for one school. And because there are so many moving components to what the actual grant would come out to, because you can have five students going to the same exact school and have drastically different um, grant, Oregon Tribal Student Grant um, eligibility um, when they really want a specific dollar amount. Um, that is something that they can either work out with their school or work out with us once they've received um, a an award letter or offer from an from an institution. Okay, thanks for the clarification. So yeah, if a student's really struggling with that and they kind of want to compare apples to oranges, that's really in my wheelhouse to help students with. I did that quite a bit at um, my previous jobs at a community college, as well as a small public university and a large um, research university. I've I worked at Columbia Gorge Community College, Central Washington University, as well as spent the past almost eight years at Oregon State University. So walking students through um, the awarding process and really decoding an award letter is something um, I'm very comfortable with and very much in my wheelhouse and very much like helping students um, figure out because again, it can, it, can, it can vary so much from school to school. Um, no school does financial aid processing uh, a uniform way. Great, wonderful. Thank you, Jake. Are there any other questions? Okay, I guess not. So yeah, well, and just to reiterate real quickly, if the student does um, apply for the Oregon Tribal Student Grant, that school is not set in stone. If they really need to change or even want to transfer mid-year, they can email us and we can get that updated. And when you say us, uh, would that be you directly? Yeah, sorry, me directly. So they can just email um, jacob.logan at heck.oregon.gov. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so very much, Jake. We appreciate your time today. Of course. And uh, we will go ahead and stop the recording.